What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to work on something a little different. We're going to set up a Ubuntu desktop machine on Proxmox. So in the past we've set up the server version with the command line but today we're going to actually set up the graphical Ubuntu machine. And this was requested a while back and I just remembered about it so I figured why not make the video. So today we're going to set that up and set up RDP for it too so you could access it as a headless unit. So let's get right into it. So the first thing to do is to come over to the Ubuntu website and you can come over to the, here's the main page, we come over to downloads and then there's all the different versions and we want the desktop version and the latest version is 2204 long term. So we'd select that and then you, it would download. So after you download it you have the ISO file, I already have it so I'm going to cancel it. But you would download the ISO file and then you can come over to Proxmox and here you're going to select your drive that you can upload ISOs to. So for me it's my local drive. And I would select ISOs, upload, select my file. And then from there it's going to open up the Windows Explorer so you can get your ISO image. So for me, I store my ISOs in a different spot. And I actually don't have it on this VM, but you would select it over here, and you would select one of your ISO images. It would upload, and then you can go from there, and it would be active like it is right here, the Ubuntu 22.4 desktop. So now we are all set to actually make the VM, so I'm going to come back over to Bar Mind Tech. So you would select your actual server, and we're going to make a VM. And you can call whatever you want. I'm going to just call it Ubuntu. I'm going to click next, I'm going to select where my ISO is, so if you run multiple drives, you might have different ones, I only have the local drive that can be used for storage for the OS, so we can go from there, we go system, I'm going to leave default, I'm going to select a different drive, so I want to use the local LVM, and I'm only going to use it 32 gigs, uh, this can be spanned up if needed in the future, but if you plan to use this machine as a daily driver, I think the recommended for Ubuntu desktop is 24, so if you're going to use this daily, I'd say maybe give it 50 or maybe even more if you think you need it, but it can be scaled up in the future. I'm going to click next again. I'm going to give it four cores because two cores is the recommended. And I'm going to give it... 4096, so I'll give it 4 gigs of RAM. We'll click next, and I'll leave the network options just default, and we're going to start it after creation. So everything looks good, and we're going to finish up and start it. And we'll just double click over here, and it'll open the VNC window into it. And here we can start the install. So installing Ubuntu is actually super simple. If you haven't done it before, it's very similar to the Ubuntu server but it's probably actually even a little simpler. So once this loads up, we'll get started with that. So as the new machine boots up, you're gonna see that it has the logo, and it says it's loading up, and eventually it's gonna load into the installer. So once we get there, we'll start through with the installer. So this is the installer menu, and you have two options when you actually go to set up an Ubuntu machine. You can either just try it out, and it'll run it like all the USB, but we're already in a VM, so this option doesn't really work as well where you can install it. So we're just going to install it. You can select your language you prefer to work with. I prefer English. We'll click install. And that's just going to go through all the prompts asking you questions. So it wants your keyboard layout, which kind of install you want. So I want the normal install. We'll download it while we install. We'll keep going. I want to clear out the whole disk so if there's anything on that disk it will clear it out. Again, it's a brand new partition of the disk, so there should be nothing on it anyway. Click install now. And now it's just going to give confirmation telling you, hey, we're going to wipe everything out. So we'll click continue again. And it's going to ask you what region you're in. So I'm in New York. We'll click continue. And it's going to ask you your name. So we'll put bar mine. And it's going to name it, and then we'll give it a password. They match and they're good so we want to either require my login my password to log in or you could just have it log in automatically whichever one you want it's a public access machine I would say 
put a password on it. Click okay, continue. And now it's going to actually do the install. So this could take a little bit of time, maybe about 20 minutes or so, depending on your computer's hardware. But after this is all done, your machine will be ready to boot up and be able to run. After some time, your machine will cycle through and it'll be all done, and then you can log in. And it'll actually bring you to the regular window, and then you can log in and it will have you restart it to apply the install. And then we're all done. So now, you're going to have updated software, so you could either do it this way or you could do it through the command line, but now we have this, the GUI, so we can do it this way. So we'll run some updates. And it's going to apply the updates, and then it's really cool because you can link your other accounts. I'm not really interested in this right now, but you can sign into Google and stuff. There is other options. You could do Ubuntu Pro. I'm going to skip this for now. And you could do that. I don't want to send system info. So we'll just click next. I don't want location services on. And I don't really want any of these at the moment. So we'll just close that out. And we can see that our install is running. And it looks like it's upgrading the system. So we'll just give this a minute to finish up. And then we'll be right back. After the updates are all done, it'll tell you the software is all complete. And from there we're good to move on to our next step. So, if you're running this off your server, you're most likely aren't going to work with it directly off your server, and you want to RDP in, which is fine, because you can. So, we're going to set that up real quick. So, to set up RDP, it's super simple. All you need to do is come into a terminal, and after everything's updated and upgraded, you're going to do sudo apt install xrdp. You're going to give it your password for sudo. It's going to install it. I already have it installed, so it's going to do that. And we're going to do sudo system cuddle start xrdp. And it's not going to give you any notifications. And you'll do sudo system cuddle status xrdp. And it'll tell you it's running. Uh, I'm not going to worry about these errors. But uh, it's running. So now if I come over here, I can close this out. You do need to log out to access the Linux machine over RDP. If you don't log out, it's going to just leave you lingering in the RDP in a black window, which is fine, I guess. Um, it's not like Windows that will kick you. So you could just open up an RDP session. You could extend it and put a, a username in. We'll click Connect. I don't want it to ask me again. And it's going to open up the VNC window. So you can see it already has my username in. So then you can just put your password. We'll click Enter. And we'll give it up a minute, and here we are loading in. So it's going to say action required because it needs your password to sign in. Put it in. And here's your new Linux machine that we just set up. It runs just like it should. You can do all the different stuff. You can show your, your activities, all the different programs on there. And you're good to go. So typically we always work with the server side of uh, Ubuntu. I never really use a graphical machine, but it's something different to use. I actually use it for school for one of my classes. We use the Seed Labs, and I need a graphical version of it. And I figured, why not make the video? And I also had somebody ask about it in the past. So I figured, why not make this video and show you how easy it is to set it up and set it up for RDP access. So again, since it's running off your server, you're going to probably need to RDP into it all the time. So that's why we went over how to set that up because, you know, you got to access your new machine somehow. So, I hope you liked the video. If you guys have any questions or you want to see anything in the future, comment down below so I can look into it and get the, those videos up for you. But I hope you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one.